Yo, what is going on YouTube? It is your boy GZTV. We are back with another video, and in this video, I think that's good, we are going to be talking about the 1994 American buddy comedy film directed by Peter Fairley, who co-wrote the screenplay with Bobby Fairley and Bennett Yellen. We have Dumb and Dumber. This is obviously what would become known as the Fairley brothers working together. This is their directorial debut. Um, and yeah, these are just, there's just a bunch of movies they've released since this. Yeah, Dumb and Dumber, man. This is the start of something legendary for, for this brother duo. And I do remember watching this movie a couple of times as a kid, but I forgot exactly what the plot was and what happened in this movie, really. There's obviously unforgettable one-liners like this. I'll be right back. Don't you go dying on me! But this is a pretty fresh film in my mind, so that was exciting going into this. I kind of forgot what happened in this movie, like genuinely. I don't think I've seen this movie since I was like, I don't know, seven or eight. I don't really have a good memory in my childhood, but obviously I wasn't really like mentally aware. But uh, we know this was the big break for the Fairley Brothers again, and it established Daniels, obviously who played Harry Dunn, as a legendary comedic actor. This was a huge movie for him to be in, so let's just get into the premise. So getting into the premise, this movie follows two innocent, dumb, nim-witted adults from Rhode Island, Providence in particular. We have Harry Dunn, played by Jeff Daniels, who like used to work at for this like dog parlor, like prepping dogs for a show. And then you get Lloyd Christmas, played by the famous Jim Carrey, who used to be kind of like this chauffeur to like the airport, like a taxi. Um, and they decide they want to make something out of their check-to-check, down-on-their-luck lifestyle. Like, they need to, you know, there needs to be a change because they're going through a lot of things. You know, they can barely get something to eat. They're on their last dollars, and they need to make something happen. And uh, Mary Swanson, a woman Lloyd is attracted to while driving her to the airport, drops off a briefcase at the airport. I can't remember who plays her. I'll pop it up on the screen if I figure it out. So yeah, she she drops an, a briefcase at the airport. And Lloyd mistakes the briefcase as like her lost goods. Like something she left behind at the airport. Rather than like a ransom that was in the middle of this criminal operation. And he decides this is their opportunity to get out into the world and be so kind as to return the briefcase to her you know like do this good deed try to win their heart gain the love and approval of miss swanson here so you know obviously little do they know they just got in the middle of some deep shit however the show must go on we hit the road towards aspen california and we meet all sorts of trials and tribulations so getting into the good, I'm usually not a fan of people acting mentally challenged to get some comedy off. I think it comes off as kind of offensive. It comes, I mean, I don't know like anyone in my family that has mental disabilities, but it comes off as kind of forced. It comes off as kind of fucked up, but I think it like kind of works out here. It's not like too much to where you're like, what well, this is just offensive, but it's not like I, I don't know. But um, some of the subtle com comedy through, like, irony, it's so damn good. I think just the subtlety of the humor in this movie is what makes it so good. This is probably my favorite Jim Carrey role and movie he has been in. It's up there with Liar Liar. Like, I wasn't that big of a fan of The Cable Guy, and I'm sure there's other movies of his we will watch on the channel eventually. One that comes to my mind, uh, let me think. Oh, The Truman Show, but that's not really a comedy movie. Let me think here couldn't think of the other one I had in my head but so I it, it's crazy there's like a Spongebob and Patrick dynamic to these two characters of Harry and Lloyd and I think their chemistry and overall everything they went through in this movie was great I think it's awesome like how they dealt with things you know how they bonded is pretty much blood brothers at this fucking point uh, literally just a raunchier version of the Spongebob movie and I loved that movie so like going back to this as an adult and seeing kind of like that childhood flair out of these two it was awesome Obviously, it's a little more explicit this time around. And that's cool. Like, the, I don't know if anyone else gets this, but that's kind of how I interpret this movie. Like, obviously, there's not really a romantic interest in the SpongeBob movie, but they're still on, like, a road trip seeking something. And it's really nice to kind of get a comedy movie for once that is not trying to be woke or give a social message it's just a flat out a surface level concept that you can relax lay back watch be deeply entertained and because of that i feel like this movie has a lot of rewatchability i mean this movie's a really fun time like it's it's extremely entertaining you can almost never go wrong with a road trip comedy flick they hit damn near every time these are 
These are fantastic movies. And I also think it is so impressive how you can take a concept so simple as this woman left her briefcase at the airport, let's get it back to her, and like give it so many implications, so many things behind it, so many fun plot lines interwoven. This, this is a really cool concept. Obviously, it's not super unique. It's kind of cliche, but... It's awesome, man. I mean, and, and like similar to the 40 year old version being the directorial debut of Judd Apatow, let's talk about this as well. I mean, this being the first Fairly Brothers movie we've gotten, although in my opinion, it's not as good as 40 year old version. It's pretty close, but this is still a hell of a debut for the first time for the time period as well that this came out in and for your directorial debut. That is that is awesome, man. So getting in the, in the bad, this is going to be a pretty short segment. Uh, this is, I mean, like, this is the first movie I've seen on this channel where there's nothing inherently bad about the movie. Like, the comedy gets a little obnoxious at times, but I can tolerate that when so much of the dialogue in the script is just fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's obnoxious, and again, that's something you can say about a lot of Jim Carrey movies, but a lot of the stuff they say, the one-liners, it's fucking funny as shit, man. Getting into the okay, the thing I will say about this movie is that the only funny moments happen with the two main characters. And I am a fan of movies that have all the characters being funny, but this isn't a bad thing at all. Like, given that the, they are the characters with about 90% of the screen time and none of the other characters except maybe Mary get involved that much, it would, I mean, obviously it would have been nice to see like a hitchhiker from there's something about Mary situation. I think that would have been pretty cool. Like, throwing, like, a thug at the gas station or, like, a preppy woman outside of Mary that they could try to flirt with. I don't know. I guess they tried to do that with that one girl, and they mixed up the dates. That was funny, but, like, the characters in itself, the women, they weren't that funny. If I watch any of the other movies, I would like to see other characters get involved in the laughs, and I hope they do. And I'm pretty sure in the future I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about watching those movies. Matter of fact, I mean... These two were so funny and their characters were so engaging that I didn't give a shit about the bad guys. Briefcase with a target on these guys back? Who gives a shit? And I'm gonna be honest, that is another mixed element, is the fact that the whole plotline of this briefcase being missing was so pointless when this story was pretty much centered on them like gaining the love of Mary Swanson. Like, it didn't really matter that the briefcase was involved. Sure, everything kind of culminated in the third act, but that didn't really matter at all. Like, whatever happened to these two, it's going to be funny. So who cares if, like, they the, the guy got shot in the chest? Like, so what? Harry got shot in the chest, but it was fucking funny, you know? And maybe that's something you could debate is bad. I mean, the bad guys really aren't a threat. Uh, but maybe the irony of, like, these total idiots coincidentally just overpowering them is kind of like the comedic tone they wanted to go for. And for that, I think it works. There's a lot of irony. There's a lot of funny stuff like unintentional things that happen in the movie and it, it's it's a great time it's it's kind of advanced humor honestly in a lot of aspects but it's still a very chill movie to watch so getting into the review it is tier list time baby this movie just shows how funny both carrie and daniels are because without them being funny this movie would probably suck like but they're here it's a good time Again, it's just like The Cable Man. If Jim Carrey isn't in the movie, the movie's not going to be good at all. If you cast anyone else to be in his role, the movie is not going to be good. There's two other movies in the franchise, so I mean, if you guys want me to check those out, I would be glad to. And I am, I'm going to give this a 9.2 out of 10. I think it is quite exceptional in the comedic genre. It is up there with some of the best movies we have watched on this channel. I think the only movies that are really better than it that we've watched so far... May, I would say 40 year old version is probably the best we have seen so far that planes trains and automobiles is probably slightly better do I like there's something about Mary better than this ah eh, I don't know um that, that's kind of a toss up those are those two are pretty comparable for me because it's honestly kind of like the same type of concept except you're not going back to like your high school days but this is this is cool man I really like this movie. Hopefully you guys, if you've watched this movie before, you like it as well. Let me know in the comment section because if someone comments that I should watch the other two movies, I will stop what I'm doing with all the other movies and watch them. Because usually with these comedy films, you don't get sequels. You don't get even a prequel like what we got with this. But we do, so I think there's an opportunity for me to really explore the franchise and see if some of the things that maybe this movie didn't do the greatest at could be redeemed in the next one. So, I'm out. 
leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Again, hopefully you enjoyed this movie. If you watched it, if you've ever watched it before, it's obviously been out for like 30 years. So I'm hoping most of you guys would have got to it by now. And this isn't a spoiler. Um, I try not to spoil shit in my reviews, but I'm out, guys. I'm going to kind of chill for the rest of the day, watch an episode of you. That'll be that.